I got another question that someone asked me. They said, let me switch the screen here so you can see what I'm seeing. They said, hello, Bruce. I'm interested in becoming an information system security officer and was interested in your course and what guidance you can provide and on what courses on your site I should start with. I was using Daryl Gibson, but I, I think he's a real popular Security Plus trainer. But I know that 501 expires on July 2021. What books should I get for the risk management framework for the CAP? Okay, so first of all, I am developing a CAP course, um, but that's not going to be out for a while. Now, if you want to know what book that I would use right now for the CAP course, I can share that with you. I'm going to bring that up real quick. The one that I think is a really good one. It's not cheap, and I I mean, it's it's so expensive, I want to apologize for how expensive it is. <laughs> but there's no uh, real op, um, alternatives to this book um, that I've seen. Um, there's, I mean, there's just not a lot on the cap, you know, and that's why a lot of people follow me because there's that's not a lot of people talking about risk management framework, and this is one of the few books that uh, that are out there that I think are are worth your time. I have this book. I'm reading through it, and it's it's really good. I mean, as far as as far as taking the cap, it's really good. I don't believe it's super practical, but I think it's a good book for the actual test. And when I say practical, there's a difference between, if you're an IT guy, you know this. You, there's a difference between actually taking the test. There's a difference between taking the test and doing the work. And they're just two separate things. So that book right there is really good for the official guide to the CAP uh, common body of knowledge is a good book for taking the test. I mean, because they're hitting all the objectives line by line they're hitting objectives so that's what you want in a good certification book objectives if you didn't know typically what certifications i used to teach certifications so what t what certifications do is they they have different domains right each domain has a different category a, a broad category like for example cissp has i don't know seven categories i don't know if this should change i took it a long time ago so i apologize for my ignorance <laughs> in advance so yeah and I, i'm a cissp but the, it has say crypto crypto cryptography uh domain and it has another one that that's related to security compliance right let's just use those as, as examples so the cryptography one is going to have different objectives that it's going to hit like it's going to have different things that they expect you to know right and those objectives will be different from the the security compliance domain which will have its own objectives that go deeper into the details of the concepts behind that domain and when you take the test what they do is they stick to those objectives so if you know the objectives very well you should be able to pass the test and if you don't pass the test you should be able to take it the second time and pass it so so yeah that's a good book and um and what was your other question, part of your question? That's the book that I would recommend for the cap. And then you said, was interested in your course and guidance. Okay, so for the course, for my course, I would recommend if you're trying to get become an ISO, the book is not going to be enough to become an ISO. And this is the reason why I did, I started doing this online stuff is because nobody's really teaching this i mean it's just i guess if you pay three thousand if somebody come out to your job and actually show you that way yeah but no there's just not a lot of courses that tell you give you a practical guidance on this stuff but if you're going into it for the first time i would highly recommend risk management framework information system security officer foundations which tells you what you need to know uh for for the course. I mean, not, not for CAP. It's not focused on CAP, but for the actual work, for ISO work. So if you want a free preview to see if this is worth your time, worth your money, then just go ahead and log in. 
Um, and it, this first part is free. So there you go. And then there's just lots and lots of stuff on each one of the categories of the risk management framework process. So yeah, it's, it's good for somebody who's just starting out, who wants to learn this for the first time, and maybe you know you're an IT person, but you're trying to get into risk management. But you're like, man, this I'm reading through the NIST 837. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm speaking to you in plain English and translating. By the time you're done with the course, when you read through 853, when you read through risk management framework 37, you're gonna understand what they're saying. They just use a certain language is is just very cumbersome. You know, I, I myself after years of this have to reread sometimes I got to read it over and over again because the language is not they're not using everyday speak like we're talking right now you know it's just they use all this different these different words that you don't normally see and so you're having to reread it so yeah okay answer those two questions and I got a few people talking to me let me see let me read a few um, thank you guys for watching appreciate everybody 